Alrighty, um, boys and girls, pre-AP, let's finish out this test review so you can be ready for your exam and just come prepared. Circle anything that you're not comfortable with along the way and then just visit that in the online textbook. Alright, let's get busy. Um, number 37, estimate 18% of 128. So I'm going to estimate, so I'm going to change that to 20%, which is 1 fifth. And I'm going to change 128 to a number that is compatible with 1 fifth. Now I could do 130, but that would give me 26, but 125 would give me 25. I can do that easily in my head, and that's one of the answers. 26 isn't available, so 25 is good. All right, number 38. Leon's eating at a restaurant. His total bill comes to 25.10. Leon decides to leave a tip that's approximately 25% of the total bill. How much should he leave for the tip? So I'm looking for one-fourth of 25, basically, and that's $6.25. All right, number 39. What percent of 86 is 142? This is a percent over 100 equals is over of problem. And don't get confused with it has to be smallest number on the top. No, not in this case. Is is clearly 142. So I know it's going to be more than 100%, and there's only one answer that's more than 100%. Now, once I get it into that format, then I could do cross products and then divide by 86 to get my answer. Um, number 40. Um, we're talking about a school election. There's four candidates. It gives me how many three of the candidates got, so it leaves me with the last one, um, what Francisco got. Well, I changed all the other things. I changed them all to decimals. So a half is a 0 0.5, and 18 is um, 0.18. So I got 0.92, which leaves me with 0 0.08, which is 8%. Number 41. Um, six and a half pounds of this one rock is 33 and a half percent of the total weight of all the rocks. So what's that weight? So I'm going to set up my percent over 100 equals is over of, and 6.5 pounds is 33 and a half percent. So what represents 100 percent? Do your cross products and solve. I got 19.4. Number 42. Um, we got an ice cream shop on Saturday evening. This was really odd. Um, Saturday evening, 89 people came in. Wednesday, 86 people. What was the percent decrease? So this is a percent of change problem um, from Saturday to Tuesday, which should have read Wednesday. I'm not sure why those were inconsistent. Uh, around to the nearest hundredth of a percent. So what was the change? The amount of the change goes on the top. The original amount goes on the bottom. So the amount of the change was 3, the original amount was 89. Do top in, bottom out, and you get 0 0.0337, blah, blah, blah. Change to a percent by um, moving 2 to the right and add that percent sign. Round it to the nearest hundredth of a percent. All right, number 43, Ms. Kuo is buying and selling stocks. She has these different kinds of stocks, and she earns these commission rates depending on what the stock is. 4% she earns on class A stock and 2% on class B. So what I'm looking for is 4% of 97,700 and 2% of 61,300. And I'm going to um, do that by multiplying the stock sales times the decimal equivalent, so 0 0.04 and 0 0.02, and then add those together. Should have gotten D. Number 44. Mr. Isobi wants to sell his house, but the state charges tax, the county charges tax, the city charges tax. So what's his total tax bill? That's just all the taxes together. 8.4% of 285,600. I would multiply that sale of the home times 0 .084. I multiply by that decimal equivalent, and that's how much he owes in taxes. That's a lot, but that's real life. Um, number 45. A bank loans a customer 11000 for a period of three years. Simple interest rate of the loan is 5.2%. What's the total amount? Don't forget that. Total amount. It's not asking for the interest. It's asking for the total amount that that customer needs to pay the bank. So I'm not just finding the interest here. I've got to add that back to the principal. So it's I equals PRT. Plug in the numbers you know. Change that rate to a decimal, 0.052. Um, multiply it out, and you get 1716 but that's just the interest. That's not how much he's paying back. He, that'd be crazy. So, yeah, you're going to add that interest back to the with the principal, 
and you get 12,716. All right, number 46. Um, Becky's got a statement about her CD. It shows that she got $3,870 in interest over the life of that CD. Simple interest rates, 4.3%, and the initial investment or the principal is $10,000. So how long? So we're looking for T. Same formula as above. I equals PRT, but this time I have the interest, I have the principal, I have the rate in decimal form, and I'm looking for T. So I end up multiplying it out, and then it turns into an equation. So I'm trying to isolate the T, the time. So I divide both sides by 430 to get 9. All right, number 47. Uh, find the perimeter. Perimeter is just adding up all the sides. So you should have gotten C, 62 and a half. Number 48, as we went through in class, again, it's just the perimeter. We're just adding up all the sides, which I show here. And then we combine like terms. This is a... Um, a phrase that you're going to become real familiar with when you get into algebra. We're going to combine like terms, put all our x's together and put all our y's together, and that's what you end up with. Number 49, circumference of a circle with a radius of 7.8 feet. So I'm going to use the circumference formula that uses the radius, so 2 pi r, 2 times pi times r, but for in terms of pi, I'm just going to do 2 times the radius and then leave pi, and that gives me the 15.6. But then after I multiply by 3.14, then it is approximately 49 feet. So one, is, one answer is before I multiply 3.14, and one is after. Number 50, I've got a couple of triangles that are similar. That is key phrase. And they are isosceles. I just drew, uh, drew some isosceles triangles. And the base here was 4, and the legs were 7. The base of the larger one was 10, so what's the side? So I'm going to use the, the characteristics of similar figures in that the corresponding sides are proportional to make a proportion to solve for that missing side and do cross products and divide and should be 17 and a half. All right, um, number 51. Um, actually, number 51 is only asking if it represents a function and the only thing I need to remember for a function is one input gives you only one output. And in this case, that is true. For every x, there's not um, another, there's not more than one y. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with this. The relationship is a function. All right, um, number 52, write a situation for the um, relationship of y equals 2x minus 5. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at all these different scenarios and looking to see what would represent uh, y equals 2x minus 5. So Philo earns $2 per hour but then buys lunch. So that's subtract. How much money does he have left? So that's your y. Um, that makes sense. And then look at the other answer choices and figure out why it's not those. All right, scientific notation. Um, 230,000 is a big number, so my exponent is going to be positive. Um, I need a number, first of all, that's between 1 and 10, so I moved the decimal in the number that gives me a number between 1 and 10, which is 2.3, and how many times did I move the decimal? Five times, and it's going to be positive because it's representing a large number. Number 54, two square roots of number 121 is 11 and negative 11. Number 55, let me go back to this real quick. Square root is not divided by 2. It's not divided by 4. It's the opposite of a number squared. Number 55. A square mosaic is made of small glass squares. If there are 196 small glass or small squares in the mosaic, how many are along the edge? So if I'm thinking that there is a square and it's 196 square units, then how much is the side? So I really want just the square root to give me the side, because side squared gives me the area. So a square root of 196 is 14. Number 56, I just want to see if this is dilation. Dilation is going to have the same shape, and this is obviously not the same shape. Um, it just changes in size, so that's not a dilation. All right, number 57, we're dealing with some sim similar figures here. These triangles show similarity. Um, couple of ways you could look at this. Well, I know that 20 is twice 10, so this distance is probably twice 30, 
which is the case. But if I set up my proportion, you can set it up your proportion in different ways, but you want to match your corresponding sides. All right, um, next page, number 58. Perimeter of this figure, just don't forget the missing, oops, don't forget the missing sides. 28, 36.5 on that side too. Add up all the sides for 129. Number 59, um, she's recording cars going by an intersection. What's the probability the next car is going to be red? Well, I've got 11 out of 60. Do top in, bottom out, and change to a percent. Number 60, an experiment consists of spinning the spinner. All outcomes are equally likely. So what's the chance that it will land on an even number? There's two even numbers out of five possible, so two-fifths is my probability. All right, number 61, determine whether they're independent or dependent. Whenever you're dealing with a number cube, um, dependent just means that one event has some kind of influence on the outcome of another event. When you're dealing with a number cube, you roll a three, and that's not going to keep you from rolling a three the second time or the third time or the fourth time. So it, those are independent events. And number 62 is also independent because the teacher is asking them to think of a number. So what Brooke picks doesn't have any influence on what Sherry picks. But if they were drawing out of a hat and the, the numbers were only in there one time and they didn't put them back in, that would be dependent. Don't forget to be able to um, come up with a probability of more than one event happening. It just means you multiply the probability of the separate events um, together. Now, the only, thing, the only time this would get tricky is when you have dependent events. Make sure you understand the probability of the first event and then the probability of the second event after the first event happened. Then multiply those separate probabilities. So be careful with that. All right, 63. Ablardo wants to paint his ceiling green. A lot of people had trouble with this one, so pay close attention. His dad drew a picture representing the ceiling using a half inch to one foot scale. I went ahead and changed that scale to, to get rid of the half, so I know that one inch represents two feet. So that I changed the scale to represent the same thing. All right, so it's 77 cents per square foot. So how much is it going to cost? Well, if eight inches is the the... the drawing, then I know that that's going to be double, so it's 16 feet, and 11 inches is 22 feet. Then I'm going to do area of my rectangle, which is length times width, so I get 352 square feet. Multiply that times 0.77, and I get $271.04 for the ceiling. And number 64, number line to find the sum. Start at zero, go forward to back three, where I end up is my answer, negative one. Number 65, this is the table of y equals 2x plus 3. And I can just pick out x values. So the ones I normally pick are these, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Plug them into the equation to get your y values and then plot them on the graph. Should be simple. All right, number 66. A number line to find the sum. Starting at 0, go to a negative 6, then go forward 7, you end up at a positive 1. Number 67. The coordinates for each of these points. A is at 2, 5. B is at a negative 1, 1. C is at 1, negative 3, and D is at negative 2, negative 2. Make sure you know how to plot. Be really careful with those. All right, number 68 should look like this. Your A is at 3, 2. Your B is at a negative 3, 0. C is at 5, negative 5. And D is at negative 1, negative 3. All right, 69 says complete a table of ordered pair solutions for y equals 3x minus 2. Um, and they give you some values for x. So negative 2, 0, and 2. Now when I plugged that in, um, I get negative 8, negative 2, and 4. So when I get those, I plot them on the graph. 
and it should look like that. All right, number 70 is going to look like this. I'm dilating with a scale factor of 0.6. That means my dilation is going to be smaller than my original. And what I did to solve was I took the lengths of my original figure and I multiplied each length by the scale factor. So here's my new length, new width, and it did say R is the center of dilation, so that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 out, and then 2.4 that way, and it's just going to look something like that. All right, um, number 71, use the graph to make a table and to write an equation. Now, I apologized in class, but I wish I put a, would have put lines on this grid, but it did come out pretty, pretty easy to figure out. So I've got a negative 5, 0. I've got a negative 4, 1. I've got a negative 3, 2. Negative 2, 1. Negative 1. I'm sorry. Is that right? Negative, no. Negative 2, 3. Negative 1, 4. And then 0, is 5. All right, so here's my x values, these are my y values, and now I have to do some guessing and checking to figure out what that equation is. What am I doing to this to get this? This to get this, this to get this, this to get this. If I'm doing the same thing, it looks like I'm just adding 5 every time. So your equation is always going to be in the format of y equals something that has to do with x. This is just x plus 5. All right, number 72 says use a table down here to make a graph and to write an equation. So 72, I'm going to take those x and y values and plot it on the graph. So there's my graph. But then I have to come up with an equation. Um, what can I do from, let's just take this one, 1 to 3. I could add 2, but that doesn't work for these others. What's the other way I could do it? I can multiply by 3, and it does happen to work for these others. So y equals 3x. Um, if you have any questions about this, I think this is chapter 3, if you want to do a little bit more work with tables, graphs, and equations. And the hardest thing is coming up with an equation. But um, that's it. So prepare yourself. Make sure you understand everything in this review. Anything that you feel weak in, go to the online textbook and do a little bit more digging and come to school tomorrow and come to your exam well prepared. And I can't wait to see how you do.